Hi there, my name is Remy Sharp, and this is the short version of uh, getting Next Basic software development environment set up on your desktop uh, computer rather than coding on uh, the Next itself, uh, if that's what you prefer to do. So, um, this is uh, these are the tools that we're going to use. Um, Visual Studio Code is a, uh, a highly competent editor for uh, the Mac for Windows and for Linux. So this is a truly cross-platform uh, solution. Um, you are going to need this because um, the extension is written for Visual Studio Code. So you go ahead and download that. And then from the extensions, you need to search for uh, Next Basic and install the Next Basic extension. This will give you syntax highlighting uh, for one, but also uh, tools to integrate with uh, the emulator, which we're going to use as well. The setting, well, sorry, just below uh, also a list of features, but also some of the uh, prerequisites and how to get them, uh, where to install them from. Make sure you do actually install them rather than using the ones you already might have, because I know that with Windows uh, and this HDF Monkey, uh, it doesn't quite work properly. Um, now we're going to head over to the extension settings and we need to add uh, three items. One is the location of CSpect. Uh, two is the location of HDF Monkey, and three is the location of the Spectrum Next image file that CSpect uses. And um, CSpect is the emulator. HDF, or well, the Next image is the emulator's uh, image, basically the the operating system for uh, ZX Next. And HDF Monkey is the tool that VS Code is going to use to push files directly from your workspace environment into the image down here in uh, as you develop. Um, now, on the Spectrum Next uh, .dev website, under tutorials, uh, there is a link how to uh, use CSpect on your Mac. It's useful to go into this regardless of whether or not you're on Mac, PC, or Linux, uh, because there is also a link to uh, ZX Spectrum Online dots, uh, dot online slash CSpect, which includes uh, links to the uh, distribution images. Uh, I use this two gig one, um, and it also includes a DLL for sound. Uh, so you might want to include all those bits. Now, once you've downloaded everything um, and you've pointed, uh, you've put the locations of each of these files in um, the settings, you are good to go. So I have an empty uh, directory. This example directory simply contains one single text file uh, the extension will associate with uh, .bas and .bas.txt. Um, so here I'm using uh, this kind of auto line syntax where I don't need to put line numbers, which is very handy for me because I'm lazy. Uh, you can also hand code your line numbers um, if you are less lazy. Um, and this will work. Let's just comment out this line for a second. I'm going to use keyboard shortcut. Um, save it. I do command, uh, sorry, yeah, command shift P. I'm going to run, oops, run with CSpect, and it will take my file um, and launch it with CSpect. And under the hood, what's happening is that this file gets compiled into binary, uh, a binary basic file. It gets renamed to index.bas, put into a directory called um, devil, and uh, an autoexec.bas is added to the uh, CSpect image, which launches your file automatically, which means that as soon as you launch CSpect, you, your code will run. Um, we can look at that by going into the browser and you can see we have uh, actually two files here. So what it did is it copied everything in my working directory, which include this text file, but also the new index.bas file. Uh, if I open that, you can see it uh, prints the screen. Um, and here we can see the actual output of the file. If, uh, if I find there's too many files in that directory or if I want to delete it, that's fine. The um, extension will remake that um, that uh, directory for me. Another thing to add is that anything in this directory um, will be copied across as well. So if I have uh, a binary file in the directory as well, um, this is obviously empty, but uh, you might have sprite files uh, that will also get copied across. So if I run this, um, it will copy across the demo.bin and the code still works. So we can see that by looking into the browser and we can see that demo.bin has been copied across. So that means that you can put all sorts of extra assets in this directory and they will get copied across, which is good. Now, 
Um, if you want to distribute your amazing piece of software, that's uh, pretty straightforward. We do export to BAS um, and we can give it a name or uh, we can use the um, program name, so Remy. Uh, I'm going to use auto line as well because I like it. Um, 10, it's going to start from line one, I'm going to increment in ones. Um, and we're going to get rid of uh, this. I'm going to go to back to line one. Um, you can see also when I hit enter, I'm going to uh, formats and when I try to um, export to binary, oops, if I do export to binary, it picks up the file name, which is great. Um, and we now have a um, bass file. If the bass, if you open a basic file, uh, it's actually binary. Uh, VS Code can't read it. We can click on this link and then we can do import and we can read the text again. You can see the line numbers have been inserted for us. Um, and uh, so we're talking about distributing this. Now, if I want to test this actually on my hardware, uh, actually on the Spectrum itself, um, what I'm going to do is use a piece of software called NextSync. So I'll include a link uh, to this as well. Uh, NextSync runs a piece of software on your desktop and a piece of software on your uh, Next, the dot file. And um, it is a Python script, which looks like this. So um, I've got a directory called SD card. I've got the Python script sitting in there. Um, and uh, I've got a progs directory. So if I run, um, if I open .progs, I'm going to um, copy, oops, what am I gonna copy? I'm gonna copy um, the files from my example directory into that. So these two files, the .bass and .bin, into uh, .progs. Okay, so that's where those two files are now. And over on my um, desktop, I'm gonna run Python next sync. And when I um, run dot sync on my uh, next hardware, it will talk to my desktop and send across those files. So I now have those files on my uh, next machine. So I can both emulate and develop directly on my uh, desktop machine, but I can also sync really easily without having to pop out SD cards and so on. So that's how I'm doing my uh, next development or my next basic development. Thanks for watching.